What is up guys, Kaidom here, and this is a new update for uh, the uh, new Jigsaw Adventure system uh, 4.25 plus, uh, and this new update, uh, we'll, we will be calling it 1.1, so starting from now, we'll uh, make them, uh, like this one will be 1.1, the next one will be like 1.2, so 1 mean uh, be, would be the, of course, a new update that just dropped a few days ago. So we'll be fixing um, a container name bug, We'll be handling the starting items for the main character. Some of you um, in Discord told me that it's not handled, and of course, it's uh, indeed it's not. So it's it's an easy um, fix as well. So and we will be uh, talking about the adding new containers. In this case, we'll be adding a secure container and a stash container. So the first thing you want to do here is you want to head to the BP Jig multiplayer here, and you want to look for name. Just uh, search here name it's going to pull the git container name by uh, uid and what you want to do here is you want to add a end boolean here so um this this is the old of course um the old update like it just checks for equal uh, what we need here is we needed to check for both uh, equal and uh, contain uh, container so this is what we want for uh, the git container name by uid uh, so this will this update will be live uh, i will submit it uh, later but just in case you want to do it uh, on your own, this is uh, these are the steps. So this is the uh, first step. Of course, we're gonna go back to the character, and now we're gonna be uh, we're gonna talk about the starting items for the character. So um, in this case, it's already handled here. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So if we play right now, you're gonna notice that the character starts with a pistol, and the pistol, of course, has eight uh, bullets. Um, so uh, we will. Uh, I'll show you how to handle that. Um, so. Uh, uh, like I explained in my previous video, um, it's the same um, procedure, meaning that you, you'll just go here, container uh, container settings, you'll find the container, in our case here, pistol. Or for backpack, for example, you would just click on the plus sign here, uh, the backpack, and of course, specify the data table, so armor. And of course, just play. And if I play here, the character should have a um, backpack here and that delay was just a one second delay that I added in the begin play um, for of course waiting on the server but uh, if you want to remove that feel free um, so uh, this is the backpack of course um, so of course if you don't want the player to start with a backpack you just clear it here um, so uh, for the pistol here uh, if I go here so there you go so pistol expand that start an item items you just uh, click on the plus sign you add the pistol uh, and then of course uh, in, con uh, in container item um, you can just add a mag and of course some ammo and of course the character will have the uh, pistol but of course it's not working with the current update even though the uh, functionality is there so what you want to do here is you want to go to the begin play here inside the player uh, the character and this is the begin play where uh, this is the one second delay I told you about uh, earlier so if you want to reduce it remove it depending on the network of course um, so this is just waiting on the um, uh, because sometimes the server spawns the character but it's not possessed yet so you might get the begin play before the character is being possessed so uh, this is just waiting on the uh, server to possess the uh, pawn but usually you can, you can get away with like even zero it depends so uh, it's gonna be depend uh, it's gonna depend on your uh, tests so uh, here I just added a sequence first I handled the uh, the uh, hotbar events then and then one I call the server request data so what you want to do here is you want to get the jig multiplayer uh, like that and you do, and you want to do server request data uh, so you can do it uh, this way or have the server send the data either way it's gonna work just fine um, and of course you want to pass the uh, component here and then you want to just call this event on begin play after a certain delay or whatever um, um, so once you call this, of course, the server is going to send the data to the client. And here um, we added a handle main player requested data. So this function is going to uh, handle the player equipping items visually. Now, without this, you will get the items in your inventory, but the character will not equip the items. So we need this function. So uh, so normally you would have it like this. This doesn't exist in the old update. So what you need to do here is first, you wanna, uh, from this component, you wanna check if it's a main character. And if it's true, we call this function. Now this function doesn't exist in uh, the old update, so we're going to create it. 
Um, so it's called handle main player requested data. So go ahead and create a new function, same name or whatever name you want. And then inside it's a simple function. So what we do here is we get the main replicated data like that. And of course you can uh, hold F and press here to add a for each or, or search for it. And of course we simply um, uh, loop here for the containers and then we loop through the items uh, once again. Uh, and of course just follow this function right here. So um, so loop through containers, loop through items, and then these are the checks here. So we break this and then we say uh, we uh, uh, check the main container IDs uh, if it contains the container mother. If it's true, then we get the owner, which would be the uh, character. Uh, and then we call the interface function, uh, which is jig uh, mp on main container item added. Um, so this will be called and it's going to pass uh, what container the item got added to um, here. So this is gonna be coming from the uh, container mother. Um, and of course, the two container, these are not important right now, but you can definitely use them in your uh, character if you need that information. Uh, but this is the most important thing. This coming from the mother container item info coming from item info and yeah that's pretty much it of course you want to execute this uh, interface on the main container uh, on the uh, character here so uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, bp jig multiplayer here so with this uh, change with this uh, fix right here and you call this function uh, so you want to call that function right here on the uh, request uh, server request data uh, is main character and you just call the function and you should uh, have your starting items working just fine um, So let's go ahead and talk about secure containers. So this is just in general. You can add any new containers uh, Just like I uh, explained in my previous video. You can add any Any new inventory to your uh, main inventory. So if I go to the widget here, so demo widgets And this is the main uh, BP main inventory here and so I simply added a new JSI container. Now, of course, you can, you know, take care of the visuals however you want. But what's important here is you just want to add a JSI container, whatever you like, whatever location you want. It can be like an inventory type or an equip to type. And of course, once you specify the number of rows and columns, uh, we need to set this new information inside the character and also the BP main inventory. So this is JSI secure. You go to the graph, you look for the uh, git list of uh, git list of containers, and then you simply add the GSI secure here. So you just click on the plus sign here, and you add the GSI secure here. So now you have uh, 14 containers. Without this, we'll, we'll talk about stash container later. But uh, so added a new container, add it here, and then once you do that, so uh, of course the most important thing here after you do that is to remember the rows and columns, which is two, five. Then you wanna to go to your character, uh, select the BP jig multiplayer, and then expand the container settings and add a new container. So it's gonna be this one right here and columns row five, two. And container name, make sure it's none. Um, so the name um, the um, the name here of container name should, should only be set for um, you know, equip two containers like backpack, uh, armor, etc. So in our case here, because this is a inventory type, we set the container name to none. We specify the columns and rows, and then we should be fine there. Uh, and then if we play here, um, so since we don't have any inventory here, if I pick up something here, it, it should go to the secure container here, and I can of course move things around just fine. Um, so that is the secure container. Uh, now for the uh, stash container here. Uh, if I go to other widgets here, so I just created a new widget completely separate, just depending on what you want to do with this stash uh, widget. Um, so if we open that, so uh, once again, it's just another JSI container with 10 uh, rows, 10 column uh, A. And so once again, we go to the player, we select the uh, select the BP jig uh, multiplayer, we click on the plus sign, and once again, we add another entry, and in this case, once again, because it's not an equip to, we set the container name to none and columns and rows to 8, 10. But of course, you need to return that uh, reference of the container here as in your main widget here, main inventory widget. So what we did here is um, in the git list of uh, containers here, I simply call this create stash widget, which should only be executed once with the do once here. 
it creates that uh, stash widget and then it saves it inside a variable. And then here, so of course, like I said, this is only done once with this one right here. And what's going to happen here is I'm going to get that stash widget and then get the GSI stash reference, which is just this one right here. And this is how I return that. So, um, and then of course, to make sure that you don't add items to the stash, I created a new interface function here. So if I go to the inventory here, class settings, GSI special widget interface here. Uh, so I created a new uh, function called get list of non add containers. This is a new function, which I'm going to use to return the containers that I don't want to add items to when I'm picking up stuff from the ground. So uh, if I go back to the main inventory, this is only relevant to the main inventory. So if I look for that non add here, so I simply uh, once again, uh, create here in case it's not created. And then I, I return this, um, the reference of the uh, stash container. And this is used inside the jig multiplayer here, uh, inside the function, let's see, handle G, uh, GSI check if can add actor to container. Um, and it's used here. Um, so if we go here, uh, so I get the inventory widget reference, and then I execute the interface get list of non add containers, and then I add it to this array. And then here, uh, so if it's not an equip to here, we check the slot mother. So inventories that don't have slot mother are equipment slots. Like they're just containers without any like parent container. So like uh, the backpack, uh, the content of the backpack, the slot mother of that would be the backpack itself. But a secure container doesn't have a slot mother because, or like it doesn't have a parent container. So that's how you would know if this, if this is like an equipment slot or, um, or like some container inside some item, etc. So um, if it's not a, equipped to here, salt mother, if it's not valid, then we simply say, okay, this is the non add, which is the containers that I don't wanna uh, try to add anything to them. So I simply uh, check if this container right here uh, contain uh, is inside this non, not just so I can use a tree here. And if it's true, I simply um, add the, uh, create a new variable here and I simply uh, add this container here. And then if I go here, I, I also uh, added uh, these containers right here. And then I go from here and do continue and add uh, all that um, stuff right there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so I also what I've done here is I, if you press P, if I open the inventory here, if I press P, you're gonna see your stash inventory here. And I can of course add the pistol right there. Uh, you can also sort uh, like that. Uh, if you click here, it's gonna uh, it's gonna sort all your uh, uh, weapons types, um, and of course you can select the multiple as well. So this stash here, of course, you can only show it in certain areas if you if you want. You can I don't know. You can add the widget to some uh, another actor uh, or something like that. Um, so, but just in case you need a stash, it's there. Um, so uh, also. Um, also, let's talk about these. So these are these are going to be in the new update. So they're called. If you just search for sort, you can add them here. And we do what you uh, what you do with these is you select the types that you want to sort by a an image. And of course, you have the brush color, uh, hover, and highlights, etc. So you, um, you can use these to sort or like highlight certain types. Um, so the way we add that inventory here uh, or that, that stash is in the um, show hide and I simply call uh, uh, press P and I get the widget uh, reference from the uh, multiplayer here. I cast it to the BP main inventory and based on this flip flop I either uh, show or hide. So if I double click here this is inside the BP main inventory and I have a stash content border and I simply add the child which is the widget uh, created in the um, in this right here so stash widget right here so I simply add it to the border here or remove it from the border and the border is simply here so stash content if I go here and do stash so stash content here is just added right there so um, I have an overlay uh, overlay is used to stack widgets on top of each other so we have the normal loot container and then we have the stash content and I simply add it to the stash content. So you can add it what, what, whatever you want. You can even have it added to the viewport as an independent uh, widget. Okay, I forget one more thing, which is the 
AI not dropping items. Okay, so for AI not dropping items, the fix here is pretty simple. So what you want to do here is you want to look for that loot container. Um, so if you edit, uh, op uh, open blueprint, and when I say AI not dropping items, meaning that when you're looting AI and you and you want to drop the item that the AI has in the ground, um, it's not working. So the fix for that is just open the uh, BP me uh, me yeah MP loot container and then look for the uh, drop here. So you should have a jig MP on request drop item. Uh, so this is the function that is called when you try to drop something here. Um, so all you need to do is just uh, select everything, control C, and then select the AI here, uh, the, uh, the parent AI, of course. So uh, make sure that you uh, are in the parent AI. And of course, you can verify that by looking at the parent class character. So if I, would to, uh, if I were to select this guy right here, it's going to say parent class BP main jig AI. So I'm going to click on the browse icon and it's going to take me to the BP main jig AI. And in here, you want to do the same thing here. Just look for drop and you should have this function. So it's already fixed here. So you're going to have it empty. So just go ahead and paste uh, everything there and make sure you uh, hook this uh, item info. And of course, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all you need, the item info and return the spawned item here. Um, so yeah, this uh, this is pretty much it for this update. Um, you can either follow the steps or if you don't want to do this, you can wait for the update. And, and if you haven't changed anything in the BP jig multiplayer, you can just take the U asset from the new uh, project and replace it on your own uh, project. And of course, the same thing for just copying U assets. You can copy U assets from project to project. Of course, as long as they, they are in the, sa the same version. So if you have any questions, just let me know. So yeah, until then, uh, take care. See you later. Goodbye.